एस्ट्रोलॉजी ज्योतिष शास्त्र साइंस ऑफ सर्टनटी और इंडिकेटिव साइंस वी हैड मेनी क्लासेस ऑन ज्योतिष शास्त्र एंड वॉट वी सी देर आर थ्री थिंग्स वन इज द अध्यात्म विद्या द विद्या ऑफ द आत्म परमात्मा भगवान ब्रह्म विद्या न फॉर दिस विद्या वॉट वी नीड इज मोर ऑफ अ श्रद्धा श्रद्धा इज रिक्वायर्ड बिकॉज इट इज बियॉन्ड द सेंसेस अदोक्ष नॉट विद इन द सेंसेस इट इज नॉट विद इन द प्रत्यक्ष प्रमाण right it goes beyond when we have experience that is called as sakshatkar sakshatkar can be shared as a knowledge but sakshatkar cannot be you know distributed to others because everybody needs to have their own experience so that is adhyatma vidya and that knowledge which is within the senses very gross that requires pratyaksha pramana right it has to be just like the mathematics 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 pratyaksha direct evidence has to be required because that is within the senses if you put your finger in the fire it will burn pratyaksha praman you have seen it you have experienced it similarly if you don't know how to swim if you enter into the water you will you might drown so pratyaksha praman so there are many things which are pratyaksha we don't need to have too much of conflict in this regard in regards to adhyatma vidya there is no conflict because it is purely shraddha centric i have shraddha therefore i believe that krishna exists lord shiva exists lord vishnu exists why couldn't exist i cannot prove through science right so these are very clear there is no ambiguity but there is a third one the third one is the the aspect of it is not adhyatma it is not connected to gross senses it is it is physical only but it is not the physical what we always experience beyond our experience because creation prakriti is very vast and because prakriti is very vast our subtle senses are very deep so it is not directly faith centric and it is not directly connected to direct evidence what is it it's a combination of pratyaksha pramana shabda pramana anumana pramana and anumeya pramana therefore when people ask this question is ayurved a science is it that astrology is a science those who know understand the nyaya shastra the vedangas they understand ki ayurved and jyotish shastra they are not science they are shastra no science means which can be direct evidence pratyaksha praman is required according to the theory of science science means that can be provable through what through certain measurable 
you know units or some machine or whatever it is it has to be provable so that is called as science but ayurved and jyotish shastra is a shastra why it, why we why we call it as a shastra because it's a combination of pratyaksha anumana and shabda praman so when these three aspects are involved it is but natural it is not blind faith at the same time you cannot directly prove this is going to be like this only it involves all the three aspects i remember talking to one very famous ayurvedic vaidya he said no because allopathic is a science supposed to be science now many places people have made it to a narrative science forced you to believe right but he said ayurved for that matter it is not vigyan even within ayurved the same medicine same disease same kind of patient there is no guarantee that the patient will be cured only imagine if that kind of algorithm has been developed then you can actually take out all kinds of disease because somewhere at some point of place each vaidya was able to deal with most difficult disease and help them overcome now so therefore it is explained that even if there is one person even if is one person who is not cured then the claim of algorithm fails you know there is one uh, author who has written a book called you know fooled by randomness right he has written this book and then he gives the concept of swan right when you see swan there are swans which are white in color all swans are white in color but if you happen to find a black swan then what happens your claim is that swan is white is redundant it is cancelled another true example if you go to mysore there is this shukavana now all of us indians we know parrots are you know green in color right that's what we have seen but if you go to this place there are parrots of multi colors different shape different size right then you'll be shocked oh, is it not green no there are many many colors so therefore please understand the vedic science which is not purely materialistic or purely gross indriyas not purely shastra requires all the three pramanas and because you require all the three pramanas it is by nature by logic becomes an indicative science it does not become a predictable predictable science because if it becomes a predictable science then there should not be one one story which is otherwise 2 plus 2 is equal to always 4 because it is visible putting your hand in the fire it will burn right you can say but you know prahlad maharaj's hand did not burn i have not seen you have not seen therefore that story does not fit into bhautik vigyan it doesn't fit into bhautik shastra it fits into adhyatmik vidya as much as i have not seen krishna similarly i have not seen prahlad not getting burned so how do i continue forward because i have the shraddha but i can't prove it to others only those who have shraddha they will also continue to believe what i believe if there is no shraddha it is not provable right so therefore what do the shastra do these other shastras require all the three pramanas and because we need all the three pramanas they do not guarantee giving 100% result in regards to same situation huh? 
if people understand this principle then what will happen they will not blame a jyotish shastragya for saying something as an indicative science and we taking it as a predictable science and then arguing if something does not go as we have heard right there are some of the jyotish shastragya because they have seen so many cases maybe they have a 70% success rate maybe they have 80% success rate so they act as if with that confidence you accept what i say it will come true as i said 80% it will come true but still there is a black swan there is a black swan within that knowledge there are parrots which are of different color therefore such kind of conclusive statement are supposed to be accepted with a pinch of salt hmm? again another interesting principle is jyotish shastra is one of the angas of the vedas you cannot avoid it right there are there are six angas what are the six anga there is chandas there is nirukta there is vyakarana there is kalpa there is jyotishya right so in this way the six angas of the vedanta what do they do they basically help us to understand so jyotishya is basically almost like a shruti only bhavishya is like a smriti you don't find in the jyotish shastra wherein parashar muni gives all the detailed puja what is recommended by the purohit solution which are recommended by the purohit these are basically according to different place time circumstances right they work yesterday somebody was talking one one student only means he is studying a student of an astrology somebody came to him he gave him hanuman chalisa it worked out for him very nicely and he gave a good dakshina to him but that doesn't mean that you make that as a process to everybody having going through the same problem it will not work like that and therefore in one of the purana they forgot the name of the purana this i have read personally mother parvati and bhagwan shiv ji are discussing with each other asking parvati devi is asking lord shiva what is the efficacy what is the efficacy of jyotish shastra in regards to predictability and shiv ji explains my dear parvati it is always an indication and special in this age of kali the efficacy is less because the person who is interpreting the person who is calculating computer calculation has become much better than before you know the calculation is supremely precise but the interpretation what is given by the jyotishyakara may not necessarily always come exactly correct as i said again i am giving this example generally parrots are green but there are other colors also generally there are white swans if they have off color then what happens that all swan being white is cancelled redundant right so therefore another principle why our great teachers our rishis made this as an indicative science only logical it's an indicative science psychological it's an indica- indicative science and practically also why practical it's an indicative science imagine it is as precise as mathematics 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 when you are born and all your maths comes right in your presence it is there for your parents to see it is there for you to see it is there for your family to see as precise as the mathematics 
So what does that do? That actually makes one act less. Either makes you over dreamy if you have too much of positivity about you, and the concept of purushartha is minimized. Or if you hear bad side of your child, there is a greater chance that one will become sad, eventually leading to depression. And wherever they move around, wherever they go around, what will they see? They will only see problem. Right? Either you become super positive, which is very artificial, or you will become super negative, which is also artificial. Therefore, the element of uncertainty is a very important principle in the growth of one's existence. Right? Therefore, we see if things are very certain, if I know everything exactly what's going to happen, my life becomes very boring. Right? There is nothing to look forward. Therefore, it is explained when you, when you deal, when you are going through certain situation in life, and if you are very clear, this is going to happen, one, two, three, four, five, six, and mostly leading to negativity, what does it do? That actually makes you extremely hopeless. So the element of hope comes from the principle of abstractness in life. Indecisiveness in regards to future situation. Indecisiveness in the present situation is not good. But indecisiveness about the future, what's going to happen? Because I don't know about it, what do I do? I put an extra energy. That element of uncertainty, the element, the element of going beyond limitation gives rise to great hope, energy. You fight for it, trying to change it. Right? So therefore, it is very important to understand how this concept of indication, indicativeness works. Right? Imagine, the example is given again, a donkey or an ass a hungry donkey and a thirsty donkey. And you keep water in one direction and food in another direction. What will happen to a donkey? Because donkey is an indecisive animal, unfortunately. So the donkey is thinking of going for the food. But if I go for the food because I'm thirsty, or then when it tries to go to drink, then it's worried about I'll miss my food. So generally what could happen, neither the donkey will go to the foot, nor will go to the water, it might die. Right? So therefore our mind is also a donkey mind. So if it is only uncertainty, that is the problem. Purely deterministic and certainty, that is also problematic. <clears throat> therefore what does our scripture, what does our Shastra do? Our Shastras bring this concept of Daiva and Purushartha. Right. So therefore, when the concept of Daiva and Purushartha comes, then our reasoning to context, right, there is a simple logic. If something goes wrong, a severe something goes wrong, there are some people who start, who start believing, oh, because it's already happened, now it is not going to happen anything wrong. Because we already went through it. No, there is no guarantee. There is no guarantee because you have gone through some reversal in life and you feel, okay, Baba, it has been done now. There will be no more reversal. There is no guarantee for that. Therefore, the context dependent. When we depend on the context, we become attached to it. And when we become attached to it, there is a greater chances when that context, that, that context and that uh, predictability, when it does not reproduce, it gives rise to frustration and anger. This Victor Frankl, he explains in his book, In Search of Meaning for Life. Some of the Jews were bound by the Nazi forces, right? they were not able to hold on. But there are some people who are holding on. Why they were holding on? Because 
that expectation that within one year they'll be freed. You know, so they calculated that I'll be freed within one year. Oh, I'll be freed in three hundred days. Oh, I'll be freed in two hundred days. I'll be freed in hundred days. But when that context did not get fulfilled, the author writes, many of them departed from this world because they made their context very, very, you know, small, right? So therefore, the indicative science, what does it do? The indicative science is not ignorant. The indicative science is not certain. It is a combination between indication and certainty, and that combination of indication and certainty gives rise to alertness, gives rise to awareness, gives rise to efforts, gives rise to sangarsha, and it also gives rise to inner shanti, a peace. Right, and if you are if you are practicing the you know the regular life. which everybody has to practice ahar nidra bhay mai tonam cha right those are practicing that and those are practicing adhyatma vidya also properly for such people this context depends they are able to fight you know just like these people who are caught up in the in the uh, nazi prisons when their context dependent became attachment they left their bodies i was reading a book by one sanjeev sanyal on revolutionaries of india very interesting point you know most of them i'm not saying everybody but large number of people their revolution had a great hope you know they were extremely attached to studying bhagavad gita not as using that bhagavad gita to gain strength and praying to god oh please 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 free india from the british rule from inner world they knew that they are not this body because just like arjuna or more like abhimanyu they would fight and almost everybody even while dying as young as 16 year old bhutukeshwar dutt or uh, you know khudiram bos khudiram bos ne the entire bhagavad gita by heart veer savarkar apparently was an atheist apparently but his conviction in the hindu epic was so great it's very strange right so therefore even when they were dying in the gallows of death you know there was such a deep understanding when i was reading madan lal dhingra when he was hanged by the britishers wish i could read that part it's so profound why because they were able to reconcile between their death was certain but they were also confirm that the britishers empire's death is also confirmed and their own life which was like getting over but they were able to move forward also even while dying and this is not only the great freedom fighters i was reading something else uh there is a concept of the myth right so we're going to discuss that one of the sessions what is myth and how does myth is connected to our dharma shastras so in some of the native americans and the africans and the new zealand and also in egyptian culture for us we know so when somebody would die they would keep things the cloth would be kept the food would be kept you know some fragrance would be kept so what that would do the people who have seen them pass away and keep those things there was a feeling of something would happen there will be a progressive journey for them they will come back they will do something nice so therefore having that shraddha and logic about future growth what does it do it gives rise to great progress therefore daiva and purushartha you know daiva and purushartha is a profound concept given by krishna in the bhagavad gita 
and others in the Mahabharat. So therefore, when there is too much of logic, sometimes people might get into the details of astrological chart. One can study as a curiosity, right? It is possible to study as a curiosity. But prolonged logic, when there is too prolonged logic, threadbare logic, what does it do? It does not allow you to take action. Please understand. It will not allow you to take action. There has to be an element of ignorance along with some understanding. If the ignorance is not there, then what will happen? Only logic is there, then we will not move forward only. Or if there is only sentiments driven, what will happen? We take sentiments driven decisions and what will happen if the sentiment driven decisions, if they fail, our very sentiment will be destroyed. And if in case our sentiment driven decision come true, then we'll start telling everybody else, I did like this, therefore this happened. You know, so therefore, it's an interesting principle that indicative knowledge will always help us to be active and to depend on the future. That future could be Daiva, that future could be God, that future could be our, our chart also. So therefore, it is explained, it is explained that certain aspect of our life, mathematics is very certain knowledge, right? Finance and investment has to be done very carefully. Relationship, especially marriage, has to be done carefully. You cannot just jump into that. But on the other hand, art, poetry, fun, there should not be too much of logic in that. Right? It has to come from the heart. It has to come from the emotions. Even if there is some fault in it, it will not destroy anybody. It may destroy your paint. It may destroy your art. It may destroy your poetry. But it will not destroy. Just see the combination of the two. And that is the beauty of Jyotish Shastra. The movement of the sun, the movement of the planets, the movement of the nakshatras, they are so profound, precise, right? There is no fault in that. So based upon all that movement, our rishis have created the consequences of those movement. Right? Because we are not on that level of rishis, and even if you are there, what do they do? They give it as an indicative science. Right? For example, when... Uh, when Draupadi, right? Draupadi's predicament. Sorry, Draupadi is no, sorry, Dhritarashtra. Now listen, Dhritarashtra, when he was basically, when he got to know that his son is born with a lot of ill omen, then he called for the astrologer, Jyotish Shastra, he called for them. Now they were not able to tell exactly. What's going to happen with his son? And Vidura came. Now, Vidura is very good at interpretation. He heard from the Brahmanas. He outrightly told Dhritarashtra what could happen if he continues to maintain such an evil son as Duryodhana. But he has not shown any evil deeds. How can you call a very small baby born from Gandhari and Dhritarashtra evil and then reject that child. He was correct. But the problem is, there is a hope. No, no, something good could happen. Imagine Dhritarashtra was not able to process that information. What to speak of acting based upon that information? Even after many years, he was not able to do unless he saw that reality. You know, of course, he raised his son very wrongly, but he also had his past. And that past, when he tried to stop it, it was he was not able to stop. So was it a predictable Jyotish Shastra? No. Duryodhan, oh, sorry, Vidura gave certain alternative. 
but he was very harsh in giving that alternative so when the truth is very painful when the truth is bitter generally what happen we resist because it destroys the concept of hope only it is hurtful it is very painful therefore it is recommended for those who are practicing unless they are mature you know the way they communicate they have the power to basically destroy now vidura speaking to dhritarashtra because he was such a great saintly person dhritarashtra was the king and the stake what is involved imagine imagine a foolish boy who is not a boy he goes around you know he doesn't have any interest in politics and you made him a prime minister during the covid what will happen it is not simply destroying one family it is basically causing colossal destruction of the entire state entire country the number of citizens right so therefore naturally dhritarashtra was not willing to accept it another but the point is the knowledge was given options were also given by vidura you know he could have to look okay, and do this one for that again we see the second story pandavas the pandavas just before the incognito in varanava they were supposed to go to incognito for one year then what happened before that the story of yaksha prashna happened in that story of yaksha prashna yudhishthira maharaj gave a profound answer the questions were abstract the answers were more abstract most of it it was very deep and then yamaraj eventually seeing the conviction of yudhishthira maharaj self control of yudhishthira maharaj sharpness of yudhishthira maharaj dharma of yudhishthira maharaj he chose nakula over bhima he said i am there for kunti and there has to be somebody for madri and yamaraj became so fascinated he brought everybody back to life all the pandavas and he gave a benediction to the pandavas what was the benediction the benediction given by yama is that you know what even if you come in a public place where everybody is seeing you but they will not recognize you who is giving it not some astrologer not some ordinary person this benediction was given by yamaraj only the disciplining aspect of the supreme brahman now with that information you may say why the hell we should go to incognito is it that they did not believe in the words of yamaraj certainly they believed in the words of yamaraj but still as a purushartha along with accepting that benediction deep within their heart they created a strategy they took full precautions so that they will not be exposed to anybody within the kingdom of virata to his friends to his uh, you know commander in chief kichaka and what to speak of the kauravas right they took that precaution so was it that the pandavas lacked faith no the benediction was given as an indicative science to the pandavas what will happen to them but as a proper dharmic people rooted in the shastra they also took responsibility of putting that effort to such an extent when their last part of their incognito was there and duryodhan started doing all kinds of hard labor trying to find out where the pandavas are he comes and asks bhishma dev and bhishma dev you know in the name of glorifying the pandavas spins the bill uh, you know uh, sp- uh, spills the beans saying that oh wherever there is prosperity wherever there is happiness wherever people are doing good imagine sometime your glorification is exposing your own people duryodhan realized oh, that place is virata 
so he tried to attack virata's kingdom from both the direction and then what happened the pandavas did defeat them fortunately the time had passed they spend more time remaining in the forest compared to astrologically they had already spent more time this is what bhishma told duryodhan he said oh i exposed them he said no you are not exposed from the chandra manasa chart or from surya mana either way they have spent more time in the forest but before that with kichaka's story we know how much bhima avoided killing kichak but when draupadi insisted he chose between your vow or your wife she might leave her body she might give up her lord so then bhima chose a secret place so that nobody comes to know in the middle of the night he kills kichak if we follow the psychology of the pandavas and somebody gives us the full explanation even within the indicative knowledge of the astrologer this is what i have seen the you know good astrologer follow they try to pacify people they try to give confidence to people if they have a trouble some they last them certain solutions but generally they will not tell exactly as it is there are some people in the name of truth right they tell the harsh reality and that harsh reality rather than becoming a future reality for the people who have come for consultation from that very moment they start living that reality oh this is going to happen oh this is going to happen oh this is going to happen because they are not ready right they are more like dhritarashtra they are more like gandhari but they are less like the pandavas and because pandavas had this great knowledge while taking the benediction they were extremely strategic in moving forward right so therefore pandavas in incognito very interestingly they never brought the story of what oh you know what yamaraj has given us this benediction oh yamaraj has given us this benediction this is going to happen true so this kind of repetition of the story what does it do it kind of shows that you lack confidence and shraddha that story remains in the background not you know keeping it the good on it is there in the background but in the forefront there is a purushartha right when there is a purushartha which is born out of your action and strategy and there is that knowledge in the background then the sangarsha prayasa and shanti are integrated so therefore you see any of our scriptures whether it is gita whether it is bhagavad whether it is whatever scripture we see they are always harmonize between the predictable reality and you know indicative reality i'll conclude with krishna himself he comes to duryodhan as a peacemaker with the peace proposal given by the pandavas right draupadi stopped krishna in the middle asking how could you do this how could you go there krishna told her i will come back right but i have to try duryodhan will not listen to me that he knew but after speaking to duryodhan when krishna came to meet the kauravas vidur tried to stop him but you should read that part of the mahabharat you can see how krishna who is knower of everything puts that effort to stop this war he did everything at his disposal right one who knows everything then why is he putting so much of effort it is just a drama not sir it is not a drama it's a huge investment in trying to convey communicate to duryodhan asking so less so that there could be war can be averted right and not only tried then tried after the peace message failed he tried with karna 
Not that he tried there. He also tried when the battle was on. Right. So the point what we are understanding, if somebody gives you predictable chart, it is important that you make into indicative. If they give some negative aspect, ask them for solution. What is it? What can I do about it? Right? Or if they give you a lot of hope giving predictable chart, take that with pinch of salt, just like the Pandavas did. And if something negotiation has to happen, where you know there are less likely chances that I will win, still, the way Sri Krishna did, if you follow that principle, then there is a greater chance of we being successful. And if that success does come, rather than taking responsibility, rather than taking you know, right to that credit, what will happen? One who understand this Pratyaksha, Anuman, Shabda, Praman, one who understand this concept, he will have the courage with great art, with great heart, with great disposition to give that credit to Bhagavan, Sri Krishna and the rest of them. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Uh, Sanatan Dharma truly is makes us hopeful and helps us to take responsibility of our lives. Prabhuji, uh, you know, for example, if an astrologer tells us that things are possibly not very good in your life, uh, mm. he's indicating. Mm. And we work hard to make things better. And eventually, things turn out to be bitter and sour in spite of our pushart and you know all our endeavors. Somewhere uh, you have mentioned that the journey is as important as the destination. So how does one look at the journey uh, in this context? So therefore, that is not the only aspect of your life. Are you defining the indicative chart of your life or is it defining one aspect of your life? Right, that is important. Even, even if you take disease, death, loss in business, you know, breakage of relationship, all right, nobody in this world will have the chart so bad that other aspect of their life does not have anything to grow. Never like that. All right, but the problem is what happens? We focus on something which is more negative, consciously or unconsciously. And forget there are other aspects of our life which are very positive. Right? So therefore, when the combined effort of seeing this event where I need to put, like I remember one, uh, one student in a marriageable age, somebody sent a proposal. And the person who wrote, my goal of life is to be part of something very big corporation. Young girl, she was asking, but how can that be goal of life? I said, talk whether it is wrong in understanding or that is, not, that is his obsession. If that is his obsession, that more than anything else, this is what I want to do. then. A girl who wants to live a stable, integrated life where profession is there, family is there, devotion is there, some fun is there, some socialization is there, she would say, this is not for me. Right? So therefore, we have to see whether I am making this as everything of my life. Journey that we are talking, different thing only. Imagine like you don't get a medical seat in one of the best medical college and you make that as everything of your life so there is something problem with you. For example, somebody's marriage becomes failed marriage and you make that as everything of your life. Yes, it's painful, no doubt. But if that is the only thing becomes you're cancelling your relationship with your family, 
you are cancelling your relationship with god you are cancelling your relationship with your friends you are cancelling relationship with your scriptures right so therefore we have to give importance to the context but the context itself cannot become everything in our life we have to take that work on it move forward try next time so therefore death also i wrote that article about death even death is one aspect of our life it does not finish we are not finished with death we carry forward you know we move forward in our life a new fresh opening you know being more alert if you have the knowledge and play better innings in the future okay thank you very much prabhu ji truly our scriptures are you know the art of positive thinking and possibilities uh, uh we have uh, harsh prabhu uh, who has a question uh, he has raised his hand uh just unmute him please uh, Harsh Prabhu, can you please uh, unmute yourself and ask? Hare Krishna Prabhu, can you hear me? Yes, Prabhu ji. Uh, as I understood, the uh, gist of is that uh, uh, we are not to be fatalistic, even though things are uh, completely against us in the chart. However, uh, as it is an indicative science, it means that we are supposed to use our intelligence and use it as a map. to take future decision will that be correct yeah indication science means you know if those events are supposed to be part of your life for example yeah. you know it says that you know there is a difficulty in this period of your life in your family in your home yeah. front so then what is the alternative the solution has to be there okay go and stay in the hostel yeah so in that way if the parents understand the child understand you know sometime you find a hostel so the child is still under your monitor you have placed the child in a safe environment at the same time avoiding the the limitation coming from the home front or a business front where your child says you're going to make a loss so you don't work for making loss then there are other solutions you may transfer your money which is coming or your house or you know business in the name of again your own very close family member mostly parents only wife only so that what happens that indication is not stopping you from doing business but that indication is giving you certain you know restriction for functioning but the function itself has not stopped thank you prabhu ji thank you thank you very much prabhu ji uh, we'll encourage you to ask questions by putting your question in the chat box or you could raise your hand and i will unmute you yeah there's a question by lakshmikant prabhu Lakshmi Kant Prabhu, can you please unmute yourself? Yeah, uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu ji. Yeah, thank you, uh, Prabhu ji. Uh, as you said that uh, we should be, uh, we should think at holistically, and uh, also even though something is mentioned as indicative, but we should still focus uh, positively in positive direction and with the positive actions or with alternative actions. But what if like for example if especially in a, a husband and wife relationship if our spouse uh, chart is very bad or sometimes maybe it is cheated also and it is clear cut mention that we are not going to invite any good things or we are going to lose and we see evident that even after we putting our positive efforts and trying to tolerate but still things are things are not even normal we see the clear cut you know like uh, horror and all fights and even the like court we see that all is possible and it is we are experiencing should we still 
स्टे पॉजिटिव एंड ट्राई टू एंडेवर टू इम्प्रूव द सिचुएशन और वी शुड टेक सम डिसीजन बिकॉज अगेन इफ इट इज नॉट ओनली थ्रू द चार्ट सी वॉट यू आर टॉकिंग नाउ इज अ प्रत्यक्ष प्रमाण ओके इफ यू आर टॉकिंग प्रत्यक्ष प्रमाण एंड देन द चार्ट इज ऑल्सो देर सो दैट गिवज राइज टू इन्फ्लुएंस अनुमान प्रमाण you know so what you said is not related to chart what you said is related to experience pratyaksha praman and then you went and saw the chart also and chart is basically giving the same indication then then what happens then you have to make a decision should i accept this reality or should i move away from this reality do something else you no know, so that because some people may say okay whatever hell and high water because for me marriage wow zir once and for all and i will not change and i'll suffer but i'll go through this if somebody makes that convictional you know judgment that their choice and some people may say i'm done with this because i'm seeing repeatedly again and again since the beginning in the middle and the middle is continuously happening and i go through psychologists i go through astrologer they are also saying exactly the same so you are not decision making only based upon chart you are making decision based upon the pratyaksha praman the anuman praman and also the shabda praman are you getting it i think that i hope that makes sense yeah thank you bro ji uh, request uh... Uh, Pushpam Prabhu, to please unmute yourself and ask uh, your question. Pushpam Prabhu, can you please unmute yourself and ask your question? Uh, I would request uh, Jeshi Madhuji to please unmute herself and ask uh, a question. Yeah. Um, Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji. Uh, I just want to ask. that in a particular incident or in a particular situation if two astrologers have opposite views suppose there is a marriage uh, which a uh, one particular uh, astrologer says that this will not happen um, because it is not in their favor or whatever the other astrologer says that this will happen so which one to go i mean do we go by the majority or no again therefore one is the shabda again you have to spend some time investigate you know interact a little bit so there has to be pratyek as i said that in the beginning of my talk i said one is these kind of realities because they are not directly 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 putting your hand in the fire it is not like that it's talking about the future whether it will work hmm. or not so the hmm. astrology is saying it will work one astrology hmm. is not working so it is your mm. responsibility to invest time energy do some inference uh, mm. you know understand little bit so then whichever research mm. is supporting the claim of particular astrologer then again mm. you can go back and ask them okay this is what is happening you know what do you think on what ground did you say and if that ground is reconfirming with your experience based upon that you take decision and unfortunately what happens most of the time it is explained that our decisions are made based upon our emotions recently somebody was telling me mm-hmm. a mother saw her baby fall into the ganga water in rishikesh mm-hmm. now she jumped into the water knowing very well that she did not know swimming mm-hmm. now the the waters were, are not going to listen to you being a mother a desperate mother loving mother who maybe she is the only uh, mother who will care for her other child no the water body is very clear it will make her drown rather than jumping she could have called for the help of the people so she drowned the baby was protected by others right so therefore it is important that we can have an outburst but we cannot have a decision there has to be investment in decision you know warren buffett says you know you have to see and invest based upon the value rather than the price he said relationship is also like an investment only and investment which is a long term one will always be successful rather than the short term and in this case a little more i just want to ask prabhu ji like suppose that this is a marriage 
uh, the mother doesn't uh, want the marriage to happen because she knows that it is not going to be she understands whatever maybe different religion or whatever but the daughter is bent upon that she has to go go for that and again uh, here also one astrologer is supporting her and the one astrologer is supporting the mother so how does that work Opposite there there has to be there has to be beyond the mother's uh, conditioning and the daughter if the mother and daughter are willing to find somebody else so this is the this is the problem of the modern world you know previously mm-hmm. the individual person also had a right and that individual person would also connect with the family and other relatives there was a, a ecosystem which was integrated with personal choice and the family choice and the cultural choice also now there is a conflict between the mother and the daughter in regards to what to do if the daughter is willing to extend to get mm. more opinion then the that will be better if she is stuck and stubborn then mm. what can mother say go ahead you know marry mm. at least i'll pray that something does not go wrong to you mm. what else can they do they should not fight with each other at least mm. okay. thank you prabhu ji thank you very much uh, can i request uh, reshma mata ji to please uh, unmute yourself and ask your question Hare Krishna Prabhu you can hear me yes yeah prabhu i want to ask that uh, you were saying that remedies they uh, you, they give you remedies for some issues so do they how do they work and uh, and another question is that uh, if the remedies are like we are in krishna consciousness and very dependent on the lord always so uh, they give remedies like go to uh, shiva temple and do these pujas or durga temple so what should we do in that situation again it all it all depends upon your conviction the very reason you have gone to the astrologer that means you know you need support you need help right we go to many places which is not directly connected to krishna we go to the municipal officer we bribe them sometimes you know we will go and talk mm-hmm. to the politician try to you know flatter them right so where is a complete conviction in krishna there it's being very practical that does not minimize mm-hmm. your conviction in krishna you know and very mm-hmm. krishna himself in the bhagavad gita third chapter he says for the requirement of our better living in this world in the third chapter 10th verse you know paraspara bhavayanta te bhavayantu all these devatas are not anti krishna you know there is a difference between alt, uh, replacing the devatas from the supreme lord and using the resources given by the devatas so that your life becomes more stable so you can like you invest your money in some big companies knowing very well they give you better money so if the money is the wealth is there then there is a less conflict in regards to practicing one spirituality so as much as our material life is stable not necessarily you know obsessively luxurious which is a distraction of course but there is certain stability that is easier for people to be focused in spirituality poverty and lack of resources and to be deeply involved in spirituality is a rare combination i have not seen such people do that you know volunteer tapasya like shukdev goswami is not synonymous to poverty poverty is forced upon and giving up everything is is chosen a soldier dying on the battlefield and someone murdering their two different things we can't say oh he was also killed he was also killed no, there is a big difference right so therefore if yes. poverty is forced upon you then you'll be restless but you choose poverty on your own without causing trouble to your immediate family member then you are welcome so we have to understand this very clearly yes these remedies i am not saying again these remedies are not part of the jyotish shastra parashar maharshi shukadev goswami in the fifth canto of the bhagavatam 
Valmiki Maharshi in the Ramayana, he talks about Jyotish Shastra or Vyasadeva talks about Jyotish Shastra. They talk about what could happen. They don't get into the solution part. The solution parts, just like Ayurveda is not a frozen science. It keeps on building more and more. More things have added as the Smriti Shastra. So, you know, some of the wise people, they decided, okay, let us add these things. And there are stories where people get benefited. And there are stories where at least I did some puja nicely. Even though it did not work, the experience was great. No? So, both things are there. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Prabhuji, this subject seems to be uh, generating a lot of interest. And there are a few questions in the chat box. Can we take uh, some more questions? Yeah. yeah. So, Prabhuji, uh, there's a question uh, from uh, Mataji. And she says that in a relationship, uh, when things are not going well, but as per the astrologer, things will get favorable towards the end. And because of which, one of the partners takes it easy, thinking, believing that it will become all okay. You know, what, sh what should we do to rectify the situation? Yeah, again, we discussed the Purushartha and uh, yeah, Vidura, the same Vidura who gave you know, warning to Dhritarashtra that very Vidura says there are four things to progress in life. You know, the strategy he gives. What is that? Yoga, Raga, Daksha and Tantra. He says yoga means basically collection of your resources, knowing how much resources they have, bringing all those resources together. And Raga means having a right kind of mentorship. And Daksha means being expert in some particular field, you know, and then Tantra means strategy. In every aspect of life, those who use these four things and plus, you know, the indicative Jyotish Shastra, they have a greater chance of growing. Not those who philosophize, you know, oh, positivity without Purushartha is nothing but watching a movie. Nothing will happen. You will simply cry out of ecstasy or feel, uh, you know, fear while watching the movie. Once you are out of the movie, move on. We move on with the next movie. Thank you very much, Proji. Proji, uh, there's a question. Can my Pusharth hard work, endeavors change my destiny? How do you know what is your destiny? So therefore, if you don't know what is your destiny, so what is there within you? As Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita 18.14, read that part. You know, what we know is journey as we are working. And then as I said, an indicative. Indication is there. Even if you take as a profession, you know, this, this kind of people, this kind of profession you could do. They don't say only one profession. They talk about combination of many professions. And slowly, slowly, as you are in 8th standard, ninth standard, if you actually follow a natural path, then you get a clarity about what kind of profession you should choose. If you realize what kind of personality you are, you know, understand, study deeply yourself, then you'll understand what kind of uh, spouse you may need. You know, so therefore, human beings do not spend enough time discovering oneself. You know, human beings spend more time in thinking negative about themselves or thinking too positive about themselves. Right? Discovery is very important. And that if discovery happens, there is a greater chances that we will be successful. And even if there are failures in life, we will have a capacity to handle that failure. That is also success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Proji. Can we take one last question, Proji? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Proji, is there a connection between my astrological charts and Vastu? Yes, there is a connection between the two. You know, very much those two are connected with each other. Therefore, there is a concept of astro Vastu. You know, uh, so that astro Vastu, again, these two things are not necessarily directly given in the Jyotish Shastra, 
there is a vastu shastra which was more focused to the temple community building eventually that was also used because the basic vastu people they knew which direction the wind is coming which direction because they do, they were not talking about direction they are talking about agnaya vayavya nairutya ishanya right so uttara purva so the word itself will give you some indication what does it mean oh the vayavya the air part is there agnaya oh there is a fire ishanya ishanya you know it's a combination of it's a master of all the directions so because people knew the language mota moti their houses were built accordingly that only now because we don't know we only talk about four directions north east south east but if you see from a sanskrit and in your own language you immediately get to know about it so therefore the information has become very very vast but that does not guarantee common sense you know so therefore when you become too logically involved the purushartha becomes less and then research become more or sometime you only focus on purushartha and you say and i don't care for all these things you know going to the extreme end is the conditional reality of the living entity whether you are a spiritualist or not that is what they do so therefore yes there is we both but as i said too logically driven makes one not even perform their action so there has to be some logic some gut feeling you know pratyaksha anuman shabda when they are harmonized shraddha anumana and pratyaksha when they are combined they will help us to be active be faithful and be you know uh, what do you call it as you know move forward and experience greater success okay thank you very much prabhu ji uh, that was Here, very hopeful. we can yeah we can do some other time this question and answer thank sure you. thank you very much hari krishna thank you everybody for joining we we'll meet next tuesday hari krishna